Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and today we're taking a look at the best gentleman's knives you can get right now in 2020. And you don't even have to be a gentleman to enjoy one of these. Sometimes anybody can use a fancier knife. Let's check them out. Now sometimes the right knife is just the perfect thing to elevate an occasion. And sometimes you just need or want a classier knife. Something that wouldn't look too far out of place if you needed to use your knife in a more formal setting. That's where a gentleman's knife comes in. Not only should a gentleman's knife feel special, but when done well they can also seem less threatening. Whereas a big tactical folder might get an adverse reaction, a lot of folks wouldn't look twice at a smaller, fancier blade. Now there's a lot of great options out there, and really too many to include all that I personally even want to include on this video. But that said, I'm going to try to mix up some classics along with some all new stuff from this year for this list today. Now whereas most gents knives tend to work their magic by not being modest with the materials, there are still some good budget options out there, things that do a lot with relatively simple ingredients. And probably the perfect example of that is the Swiss Army Cadet by Victorinox. Now there's actually a few different colors available, but I think the plain silver makes the best gentleman's knife. It has sort of an elevated or elegant simplicity to it. Now Victorinox calls these handles Alox. It's a simple aluminum with a grid texture. And yes, that grid does add a little bit of grip, but it really makes the knife sparkle and you got that nice red shield there for that perfect little accent. Now when describing this knife in a recent video, I used the line, it costs just 35 bucks, but it looks like a million bucks. And it's handy and slim and very non-threatening too. You've got just four implements. Of course, you've got that main blade. You've also got the can opener and bottle opener tools with tips that can be used to drive screws, as well as a nice little nail file, which is an important grooming item for the gentleman on the go. Now you can fold this handy little knife up, slip it just about in any pocket because it's not going to take up a lot of space and go about your business. Or you can do what I do and actually use this to complement another standalone folder. Because even when I myself need my gentleman's carry, I still pair a multi-tool like this with another main folder. Now, if you prefer a locking gentleman's knife, but you're still on a budget, the CRKT CEO with a liner lock is a Richard Rogers design that's perfect for that, and it comes in at just 40 bucks right now. And this knife probably does the most with the least, so to speak, materials-wise anyway, because the handles are simple glass-reinforced nylon, but the texture they use on it is what makes it special. It's definitely on the subtle side, but it creates a little bit of a shimmer that's not at all unlike carbon fiber which is a really classy material for a gentleman's knife, as you'll see in a little bit. Now fold it up, you've got a nice thin pencil-like profile that's gonna carry very easily in the pocket. You've got a deep carry pocket clip on the side to keep it buried, and that blade disappears completely inside the handle. My favorite part about this knife, though, is the action. You've got IKBS bearings in the pivot, and that thumb stud is in just the right place for the perfect application of pressure. You just hit the stud with your thumb, and it really pops open. Now this design with its long narrow profile to the blade fits into the executive knife subgenre of gentlemen's knives. We actually did a video on those previously, so we'll make sure to leave a link to that if you wanna see some more options than just what's in front of me right here. The blade on the CEO is not too long though. It's just over three inches. It's a perfect small utility size. It's gonna work great as a letter opener, even maybe as a gentleman's steak knife. But for a locking gentleman's knife on a budget, the CEO is hard to beat. All right, next up, we've got the Kershaw Leak, a design by Ken Onion. And again, the handles on this knife are fairly simple. It's stainless steel in this case, but they've kept it plain on purpose. With the narrow handle and the tapered modified Warncliffe blade right at that three inch mark, this is a great shape for a gentleman's knife without being too ostentatious. Although if you do want to get fancier, there are some other options in this series with some more high-end materials for the handle. But this blade itself is going to give you some excellent piercing, as well as some fairly aggressive cutting thanks to the shape. Now this knife is secured with a frame lock, as you can see, although there are liner locking versions of this knife. And what really makes this knife at the heart of it is the speed safe spring assisted opening action activated by this flipper tab right on the back. It opens up quickly, and it's got a really satisfying feel. Now the leak starts at about 45 bucks, but as I said, there are a bunch of options out there. Different handles, as I said, as well as blade steels. This one I'm holding right here comes in at 83 bucks, and it keeps those stainless steel handles, but it adds one of Kershaw's composite blades. This gives you basically two sections on the blade. You've got a top and a bottom. They fit together kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, 
and you see that line with this thin coppery line where they are braze welded together. It gives a little bit of visual spice to kind of elevate this design. One thing to note about this one, although some leaks are hollow ground, this one has a flat grind. It really helps to show off the transition between those two sections. But this is not just for looks, it allows them to put a hard working edge right where you need it. The spine is made of 14C28N Swedish steel, while you've got CPM D2 at the edge itself. CPM D2 is made with an advanced powder metal process that makes it easier to sharpen than standard D2 without losing the edge retention that that steel is known for. But no matter which of the leaks you choose, they're made in the USA and they're classic knives that shouldn't be overlooked. Also from the USA, we have the Benchmade Tengu by Jared Oser, proving that even lowly G10 when treated right can be super classy. These handles have a tuxedo vibe to them with black material and white liners and shield, as well as a matching backspacer with alternating layers of black and white. It's also got some simple clean lines as well, which is definitely part of the appeal of this design. Now this knife is more premium in the price. It comes in at 187 right now, but it also comes with a much more advanced blade steel. We've got CPM 20 CV, which is another powder metallurgy steel. Gives you a real long lasting edge and along with stuff like M390 and CTS 204P, it's pretty much the de facto leader in premium folding knife steels these days. We've got a two and three quarter inch blade on this knife and as you'll see a lot of the gents knives on this list do come in around that three inch mark. It's not a requirement but this genre really works well at that size because the blade's going to be big enough to work but not be intimidating either to users or to onlookers. Now the Tengu mixes it up a little bit because it's one of the few gentlemen's knives out there with a Tonto profile. It keeps the tip nice and thick for more durability, but the shape overall is still pretty friendly for EDC. Like the last three knives we looked at, this knife also has a very minimal profile when it's folded. Just a little bit of blade showing with the flipper tab then there at the back. Unlike the flipping action on the leak, however, this one is manual, comes with ball bearings in the pivot, and we've got resoundingly good action. Now there's no pocket clip on this particular knife. Instead, they give you a nice leather pocket slip so that's gonna protect that knife when you're carrying it. It's got some nice matching black leather with white thread as well. Now let's get into some fancier materials with some woods. And while they're not necessarily exotic, wood tends to elevate a design very nicely. And because they're less commonly used than they used to be, it definitely feels more special when wood's used as a result. First one we're gonna look at is the Boker Plus Brad Zinker FR Flipper. This version comes with Coca Bolo onlays for about 112 right now. In addition to that, you can also get this with a carbon fiber onlay or in a slimmer version with simple drilled titanium and no onlays. Each one of those costs a little bit more than the Coca Bolo actually. Now essentially the FR Flipper is kind of a shorter and broader version of the Urban Trapper series, which you can check out in that executive knife video we did. But the wood here is really classy. It sits on top of titanium liners and have a nice heavy stone wash to them as well. It gives it a pretty good shimmer. Now you do get onlays on both sides of this knife and they are radius for a better feeling grip. And the edges of the wood have all been softened too, so there's no sharp spots to worry about. Now the clip on here is right side carry only, but it is nice and deep carry. They've even recessed the clip into the Coco Bolo and secured it with flush pins so that there's nothing to snag when you're returning this knife to your pocket. Now the blade itself has a number of refined touches that we haven't seen so far. It's two and three quarters of an inch long and you get good performance from the VG10 stainless steel. But what's really nice about it is it features a horizontal grain pattern that kind of mimics the hand rubbed satin finish that you usually only see on custom knives. It also has a nice crown spine, gives you some good comfort there when you're placing your fingers, as well as some nice visual appeal too. Now this blade does have a lot of belly and if you prefer a narrower tip, I would recommend that Urban Trapper version that I mentioned earlier. But like the Tengu, we've got ball bearings in the pivot, excellent action, and just an awesome graceful shape when it's open. Now with the right wood, however, even less graceful designs can be elevated into gentleman's knife status. And for that, I've got the Knife Center exclusive Spyderco Dragonfly with pack of wood handles, comes in a little bit over 130 right now. Now pack of wood is a man-made material that's made from real wood, so you get that real shimmer and warm feeling of wood, but it's essentially a stabilized process and it does it in such a way that cracking or swelling is not as much of a concern as it would be with a fully natural wood. Now the Dragonfly is a smaller knife, even though it's a little bit broader than some of the ones we've looked at so far, 
but it looks especially good when closed up. Some real nice lines and it carries very easily in the pocket. But even so, it opens up large enough that I can just barely fit all four of my fingers on the handle thanks to that choil there at the front. In addition to that extra grip, it also gives you some more control over the blade and lets you put it to work a little bit more confidently. Now the blade itself is laminated with stainless outer layers and a HAP40 core. Now this is a powder metallurgy seal, but it is not stainless. So it's going to give you good edge retention, but it can patina with time. And that's really in keeping with the classic character next to that pack of wood. Once that edge starts to take on a little bit of color, this knife is going to look even better. This is also actually the first locking knife on the list so far that's completely ambidextrous. You've got a subtle wire clip on the side that is reversible that mid-mounted lock back for easy access with either hand, and of course that thumb opening hole for easy opening with either hand as well. But you can be assured that this knife has the hardworking pedigree of the regular model, now with just more class than ever. Now the classiest knife on this table though, and I'm not just saying that because this one is mine, is the Chris Reeve Menundi. And this is a titanium frame locking knife that's actually the perfect bridge between classic non-locking slip joints to modern locking knives. We've got a two and three quarter inch blade made of S35 VN steel, or you can get an optional Damascus blade as well. And these have utterly impeccable fit and finish. We've got a hollow grind, crown spine, and dual milled sections here for two handed opening. But the handle itself is definitely the star of the show. These knives start at 400 and there's a lot of different wood inlay options from Makassar Ebony, Bog Oak, Box Elder Burl. This one right here is actually Spalted Beach. You do get that inlay on both sides as well. Looks nice and classy. And the clip itself is not deep carry, but it looks very premium. It's made from milled titanium and it's almost like an expensive pen. And the quality and precision you get with a Chris Reeve knife is just as worthy of splurging to get. So if the Menundi is the perfect bridge to traditional slip joint pocket knives, let's take a look at some of those because most of them do make a fantastic gentleman's knife. Now traditionals can come with a lot of different materials, not just stuff like wood or jigged bone. Those do always look great, but I've got a couple other options here in front of me. The first is a case mini trapper from their Sparks series of knives. And actually this one fits into that category of a simple material elevated by what they've done with it. This knife comes with white Delrin and it's jigged to look like classic bone. It has a really clean look and it's attractive, especially with the polished bolsters and the brass liners. I've also got a Case Muskrat here, which is another two-bladed knife in the blue pearl Kieranite handle. It's kind of like a poured and swirled acrylic, and it looks kind of like ocean waves trapped in glass. Now there's lots of different patterns available with both of these handle materials, but I picked these two patterns for a specific reason. Now they're made with a simple stainless steel for worry-free maintenance, but both have a specific style of clip point blade known as the California clip point. I keep using this phrase, but it's another classy and refined shape. It's almost snake-like with a delicate precision to it. Either of these, and indeed almost every case knife, is going to look great and have a kind of timeless appeal. These are very affordable too, just 59 bucks for this Kira Knight model and about 45 bucks for the Sparks Mini Trapper. All right, let's move up the materials ladder a little bit and get to titanium. Now the inclusion of titanium doesn't automatically make a knife fancy, but on the right design, it's a high-tech alternative to stainless steel or aluminum. And titanium makes a starring appearance on perhaps the most advanced slip joint on the market, the Lion Steel Thrill, which is made in Italy, and there's just something luxurious and special about that thought. Now the backspring and the handles are all milled from one piece of titanium. It's an integral, just like their frame locks that made Lion Steel famous. Now there's a couple of different subtle anodized colors to the titanium versions. This one is the bronze and it runs about 200 bucks. Now you can get aluminum versions of this knife that come with brighter colors and even less money at about 120, but these more reserved colors on the titanium versions are definitely more stately. The blade is M390 steel, a little bit over three inches long with a nice crown spine. It's also got a full flat grind. It's really built for slicing and high edge retention. There's some really good snap to the action too, with a nice half stop along the way. They've also given us an excellent and innovative execution of a pocket clip, which is something most slip joints don't have. Now they call it their H-Whale system, and a spring keeps the pocket clip flush, actually inset into a pocket in the handle. But if you push this button on the opposite side of the knife, that'll extend that clip when you go to pocket it. Then, as soon as you pull it out of your pocket, the spring is going to pull that clip back in so that you don't ever have to feel it when you're working the knife. 
Now sticking with titanium, there are plenty of titanium frame lock flippers on the market and there are some of them that make a great gentleman's knife. And for that, one of my favorites is the ZT609, which is an RJ Martin design, comes in at 260 bucks, made right here in the USA. Now, this is one of the larger blades we've looked at so far with 3.4 inches of length, but it's not so chunky that it's gonna feel overly large. We've got 20 CV on the blade, and it's a good general shape. But as with most gentlemen's knives, the handle is what truly elevates it. We've got an intricate milling pattern going on, on both sides of the knife, in fact. Gives you a good grip and good looks, and it comes with this nice anodized bronze color. It's not shiny like gold, a little bit less flashy, but very nicely done. We've also got ball bearings in the pivot. It's actually RJ Martin's see-through pivot. Kind of ups the visual interest a bit, and it does deliver great manual action. Now, if you want your gentleman's knife to have more capability than some of the smaller ones here, this is one of my favorite ones to recommend. And I'm going to have another one a little bit later as well. Now, on the smaller side of the titanium frame lock flipper genre, we've got the newly released MKM Flame, which is based on the highly successful custom MS3 from Michael Ziba. Now, there's serious pen knife vibes going on with this blade. And it has the charm of being Italian made as well. It's kind of like a higher end but smaller CRKT CEO. Nice narrow profile with a blade that nearly disappears when closed. Also like that knife, we've got ball bearings in the pivot and the flame has killer action too, this time from a flipper. Got a 2.8 inch blade, M390 steel with a drop point shape, although there's a dagger profile that could also be had. But that blade itself is ultra precise and the handle helps control it pretty well too. It's got a good contour for comfort, nice and minimal and elegant with just some blue anodized accents. And the milled pocket clip on the back actually acts as a bit of a control surface for your fingertips. It's definitely helpful in certain grips. Now, full titanium versions of this knife start at 200 bucks, but for the same price, you can also get a carbon fiber version, which leads us to our next section of knives. Now, it's almost a little bit of a cliche, but you can almost put carbon fiber on anything to make it fancier. It's an easy move because it looks great, gives things a shimmery and modern feel. And that flame itself is also available with a marbled carbon fiber handle. It's a little bit different than a standard woven twill pattern. But you can really see why this particular material is so popular with high-end knife makers these days. It has an awesome shimmer to it, and I think I like it even better than the titanium version. Now, carbon fiber also shows up on more affordable stuff too. And if you want similar vibes to the MKM flame, the Civivi Chronic, while not identical, it is a little bit bigger, is going to get you pretty close. Now you can get G10 versions of this knife for around 50 bucks, but this version with G10 laminated with a top layer of twill carbon fiber runs about 78. The handle here is still nice and minimal with a bit of an octagonal cross section, and that blade also nestles nice and deep inside the handle. We've got a liner lock there for safety, as well as a deep carry pocket clip that is reversible and a lanyard loop that's halfway nestled into the end. We've got a ball bearing pivot with this knife, so the action here is also nice. The blade steel gets an upgrade over the $50 versions as well. We've got about three and a quarter inches of Damascus steel, and they base their Damascus formula on 9CR18MOV stainless. It's a lot of letters, but the performance should be in the ballpark of 440C. That's actually the same as the base steel on the standard version, so you don't get a performance bump with this knife, but you do get that visual splendor of the Damascus. Now, carbon fiber also works on simpler slip joints as well, and we've still got a good number of the Cold Steel Lucky One. Crazy slim and lightweight knife that's just 50 bucks right now. And it's Italian made too. We've got gorgeous carbon fiber for the handles here. They're contoured, and you've got these broad finger grooves. It really makes it feel like a solid grip despite the whole knife weighing less than an ounce. You also get a pocket clip here, something that again, most slip joints don't have, but if you want to remove even more weight, you certainly could take that off. Now, the other thing we see here that we don't often see on old school knives, an S35 VN blade steel. Not only do we get that premium material here, but the blade stock itself is super thin. That combines to make this a classy knife that's a phenomenal slicer that's gonna keep on cutting after thicker blades simply quit. Now I did say I had another big boy option, and that's this Ray Laconico design from Artisan Cutlery, the Centauri. And despite the broad shape, it still feels highly refined, and that's definitely thanks to Laconico's eye for design. Now this knife runs 200 bucks for the three and a half inch bladed version, but if you like this shape but need something more modest, 
there is a sub three inch version for a little bit under 180 bucks. We've got lovely carbon fiber on the front and a titanium frame lock on the back. And this is actually a front flipper knife in this case, which is easy to actuate even for me. And I'm not always the most graceful at this type of opener. But I'm able to swing this impressive modified Warncliffe blade open quite easily. It's available in VG10 Damascus for a good balance of looks and performance. Or for the same price, you can get S35VN for even more edge retention. Now, despite the shape, this knife is not all about brute force. The blade stock is not crazy thin, but it is certainly thin enough and with a high flat grind and a razor edge, so that's really going to slice pretty well. We've even got an all important swedge here at the spine, which is going to remove some drag. And that's definitely a bigger deal on this knife than most because of the broad shape of the blade. But needless to say, this knife is ready to get some serious work done, certainly more than its fancy looks would suggest. All right, that's all I've got for this list of the best gentlemen's knives you can get right now in 2020. Love to know what you thought of my picks. Make sure to leave your comments down in the comments and let us know what your favorite gentleman's knife is as well. In the meantime, if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, we will leave links in the description as always that'll take you over to knifecenter.com. And while you're over there, I recommend signing up for our Knife Rewards program because if you're going to spend your hard-earned money on one of these knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.